It came to pass many hundreds of years ago that the story of Quasimodo and the lovely Esmeralda unfolded here in Paris. Even in those days, Paris was a great city where the citizens viewed everything strange or unusual with fear and mistrust, and many of them believed in witches and the devil. As throughout time in those days, there were also children who had no parents. Most of these children were secretly brought to the church in the hope that the pious nuns and the monks would take care of them. Also in the morning of the day, where our story begins, the nuns and the monks of Notre Dame, the most beautiful cathedral in Paris, discovered a foundling child in the church. <coughs> Holy Mary! I don't know much about children, but I am sure that it's a sin to look upon this child. This, my dear sister, is no child but a misshapen ape. It is a horror to behold. It can't be Christian. It should be thrown into the fire, I'm sure. All right, you are, my sister. It belongs in a great big fire. What are you so excited about? Make way. I think I'll adopt it and take it with me. My can't follow. Just look at it. Exactly. That's why, my friend, it'll be interesting to see whether I can teach him to speak and think, whether he can learn to love and hate. A challenging project. I've always said that that Claude Frollo is a warlock and a spellmeister. And he wants to become the Abbe of Notre Dame. He'll use this little monster to assist him in his experiments. The child must be baptized and given a name. I'll call him Quasimodo. Quasimodo? What does that mean? Quasimodo? <laughs> it's Latin and means only more or less. We have to give Claude Frollo his due. Quasimodo. More or less. <laughs> A few years later, Claude Frollo became Abbe of Notre Dame. Quasimodo grew rapidly and soon surpassed all the others in size and strength. However, the citizens of Paris couldn't stand Quasimodo. Many insulted him because of the way he looked. Look, there goes the Abbe and his hunchbacked assistant. He should lock Quasimodo up in a tower. I don't dare put my foot outside the door at night. You never know with people like him. And because the insults became more frequent, he hardly left the church anymore. Instead, he soon knew every nook and cranny of his church. He was most fond of the bells. The first time he hung on the bell toll, his face lit up with joy. The bells became his best friend. You are my favorite, Marie. No, no, don't be angry, Jacqueline. I love the sound of your high-pitched voice almost as much as Marie. Yeah. From day to day, the bells of Notre Dame sounded lovelier, so it was no wonder that the Abbe Frollo made Quasimodo the toller of the bells of Notre Dame. Quasimodo may be a monster, but no one can ring the bells as beautifully as him. Is it true? He's gone deaf from the noise. <laughs> yes, that's true. But one handicap more or less won't make a difference to him. It was Marie, the deep bass bell, that had ruptured Quasimodo's eardrum. But as Quasimodo didn't talk to anyone anyway, it wasn't too bad. He could still feel the vibration of the bells, and that was enough to keep him happy. Quasimodo was about 20, when, as every year, 
At Pentecost, the whole city of Paris turned out into a festival. <laughs> oh, cried the glass of Burgundy. Oh, moon, you divine inside of me. Pour forth from your silver chalice. Oh, listen to Pierre Gringoire. His verses get worse and worse from feast to feast. Hmm, okay. Maybe you like the next verse better. She lives alone at the bottom of the sea. She is as dumb as you and me. Exactly, you said it yourself. Dumb, that's what you are. This is intolerable. Let's get out of here. Let's go. And runs ten knots per hour. Citizens of Paris, come ye all here, come ye all here. As highlight of today's festival, vote for the Pope of Fuse. Some amusement at last. This is what I've been waiting for. Do you remember last year, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Art is understood by no one here. To earn a sou for them to dear. A poet's luck to die misunderstood. His heirs are the ones who will have it good. Come on, everyone! Trust yourselves! Stick your head through the hole! The one with the ugliest grimace will be crowned pop! Oh. It will be Monsieur Dubois. How did his nose manage to get bigger and redder? <laughs> <laughs> Mary, that one's so cross-eyed you get dizzy. <laughs> That's the pub of fools. I've never seen anything that awful in my life. Terrible, terrible. We have our pub of fools. No one could outdo him. <laughs> That's his face. Why, that's Quasimodo, the hunchback of Notre Dame. Yes, the hunchback of Notre Dame. That hideous ape. He's enough to scare the life out of you. <laughs> He's the best pope of fools we've ever had. And death, too. Let's show him to the people of Paris. Off to Place Grève. Here I stand, a lonely soul. My life is empty as my old soup bowl. Oh, so what? Life can't get worse. Off to Place Creve. And you luck, of course. That's it. By the time the luckless poet, Pierre Ringois, reached Place Greve, the Pope of Fools was already forgotten. A lovely young dancer had crowd in her sway. Beautiful. Oh, if I'd been kissed by such a muse, I never had more to be abused. I dedicate my next poem to her. Who is she? Don't you know her? She's Esmeralda. She came with the gypsies, you know? She should be forbidden to dance. She's turning the people's heads. Jelly. Jolly, come to me. May I introduce Jolly, the smartest goat in the world? Jolly, how late is it? By Jove, she's right. It really is seven o'clock. And tell me, Jolly, which day of the month is it now? It must be fun to have such a pretty and smart animal as a friend. Bravo, Esmeralda! Bravo, Jalu! Mm, the 
Mrs. Witchcraft. She's not only lovelier than the Bible allows, but she's in league with a devil. And now, dear Jelly, show our honoured audience how the Bishop of Paris reads Mass. <laughs> ah, look at that. That's exactly how he does. <laughs> <laughs> the spitting image of our bishop. <laughs> That's blasphemy, Abbe Frollo. You can't allow this. Yeah, right. It's blasphemous. I'll put an end to it. I'll forbid her to perform. If you enjoyed the performance, people of Paris, show your generosity with a few sous in my basket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get carried away. It wasn't that good. Thank you, sir. Rich. Huh? Don't you know it's a sin to bewitch the people like that? And you've bewitched the goat, too. No normal animal behaves that way. Oh, leave me alone. Come away from the crazy Manjali. I forbid you in future to perform here. Dear sir, I see that at least you enjoyed our performance. Oh, yes, very much. Oh, I'd love to drop a sou in, in her basket round and true. But I'm poor and don't, I know it. Such is life when you're a poet. <laughs> Damn you, you gypsy daughter! <gasps> Why don't you get lost, you locust from Egypt? Don't be afraid of the crazy old lady. She hates all gypsies. Many years ago, her child was stolen by a gypsy. And she believes that God wanted to punish her for her sins. That is why she has sworn never to leave that cellar again. The poor woman. No, no. She's given you quite a shock. But look, there comes Quasimodo, the hunchback of Notre Dame, and it looks like he's headed straight for us. <gasps> he looks awful. Beth? Mademoiselle? <gasps> I, wa I won't harm you. I just want to know your name. Esmeralda. He can't hear you. He's deaf. Just move your lips very slowly. Esmeralda. Esmeralda. Quasimodo! What are you doing here with this witch? And what is this costume? You is the Pope of Fools. So tell me, how dare you make fun of our Pope in Rome? Uh, forgive me, sir. Come, let's go. Who is this ominous monk? I'm not the only one he seems to scare. That's Claude Frodo, the Abbe of Notre Dame. He adopted Quasimodo after they found him in the Notre Dame. He threatened me and called me a witch. Beware, Esmeralda. He will live in a bad time. Beautiful women like you are easily accused of witchcraft, and Abbe Frollo has much power and influence. Chase her gypsy away! I don't want to see her face! Come, Jolly. The people here are not very friendly. They scare me. You stay. It's so good to talk to you. No, no, Sir Poet. It's late already. Maybe some other time. I think Esmeralda likes me, and I'm sure she has a place somewhere to sleep. She's disappeared. I'll never find her in this maze of alleys. I'm sure that she has a nice hot soup to warm a freezing poet. Just one soup, sir, or perhaps two. Leave me alone. I've got nothing myself. I saw a piece of bread. Give me a loaf of bread. Go away. Leave me alone. I've got nothing and I give you nothing. A so, uh, Give me a so. Give me a piece of bread. Leave me alone. I'll be damned. 
A one-legged man chasing me on two legs? I've seen more inviting places. Ah, noble sir, you're in the Court of Miracles, the home of the homeless, the beggars and the gypsies. I'm a soul. I really do see enough miracles here. There are blind who can see and lame who can walk. But where is the savior? Where's the hope? <laughs> You'll soon enough stop your mocking. You see? Who's one-legged jock brought along? Hehe, <laughs> I'll be damned. An honorable citizen in the court of miracles. What do you have to say in your defense? My defense? Uh, um, what am I accused of? You've forced your way into our kingdom. The kingdom of thieves and hags. What rights do you have? Are you a beggar? Are you a thief? Nothing like it. I'm a poet and a philosopher. And my name is Pierre Grand Roy. Ha 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 ha! Poet! Philosopher! And surely a bad one. You'll decorate the gallows. But listen to me. Be quiet. There's only one solution for you. Join the gypsies and beggars, and you'll be saved, if you're lucky. I'll do anything to save my skin. Even become a beggar, okay, gladly. Then swear with your body and soul to be the subject of the beggar kingdom. I swear. I'll be a beggar forever. A beggar and a hobo forever and anything else you want in advance. Now, you must prove that you are worthy of belonging to us. Bring the bellmen. Go and bring the bellmen. A stuffed puppet. How funny. He has a purse in his pocket. If you can get it, without one bell ringing, you belong to us. If not, then the gallows for you. To think that my life depends on a little bell? Oh, please, dear bell, don't ring. Come now, or else you'll take the bellman's place. Hang him! <laughs> to the gallows with him! Destiny, take your course. Stop! I almost forgot. It's a custom of ours before hanging anyone to ask the woman present if one of them wants him. If so, you are saved. If not, you'll definitely hang. Where I look, I don't think I have much of a chance. Come on, have a look at him. Does anybody want him? Hmm, he's much too skinny. You can keep him. No offers? Here, a real live poet. <laughs> going once, going twice, and... Esmeralda's coming. Esmeralda and Charlie are coming home. You want to hang him? Yes, unless you take him to be your man. What do you think? Okay, I'll take him. Thank you. For the first time in my life, I'm at a loss for a rhyme. Ha, <laughs> brother, she's your woman. Sister, he's your man. For four years. Now, go! <laughs> That was help in the nick of time. Tell me why you saved me. Jelly seems to like you. That's why I saved you. Only because of that? You haven't by any chance fallen a tiny little bit in love with me, have you? No, Pierre. I don't even know you, and you don't know me either. We can soon change that. Tell me about yourself. Where are you from? I don't know. As long as I can remember, I've been traveling with the gypsies from town to town. I don't know where my parents are. All that I have left from my childhood is a talisman that I carry in with my skirt pocket. But no one can see it or it'll lose its power. You seem to be full of secrets. So where do we go from here? You can accompany Jali and me. And if you want to be useful, you can collect our earnings. I could support our income by reciting new verses like, um, that was Esmeralda and her goat. 
Put coins in the hat or I'll go for your throat. <laughs> okay, then I'll teach Charlie some new tricks. How about it, Charlie? The next morning, when Quasimodo rang the bells for Mass, he wasn't nearly as attentive to his bells as usual. For the first time since he could remember, his heart warmed while thinking of another person. Don't be angry, Marie, and you too, Jackson. I just want to watch Esmeralda dance. I won't leave you for long. The good citizens of Paris hurried to Mass across the square in front of the Notre Dame. Quasimodo, forgetting his bad experience with them, decided to ask about Esmeralda. Quasimodo! Excuse me, sir. Look! Hunchback of Notre Dame, what do you want? Get lost! Madame? It just so happened that the judge of Paris was among the churchgoers. Sir sure, Judge? No need to tell me anything. I was a witness myself. That dangerous individual went for the lady. I sentenced him to 20 lashes and an hour in the stocks. Take him to place Grève. The punishment is to be dealt immediately. Take him out immediately now. Esmeralda, Pierre, and Jolly were also on the way to the Place Greve for their daily performance. They wondered why the square was so crowded. As they got nearer, they saw the executioner of Paris take the whip up in the air. <coughs> oh, Pierre, look how cruel. <coughs> <laughs> That's the right place for the hunchback. He should be whipped every day like that. Then he'd learn not to molest honest ladies. <laughs> water, water. Look how he's suffering. I'm sure he did nothing wrong. I'll give him something to drink. Water, water. Here, drink. Drink, Quasimodo. Thank you, Esmeralda. Looks like you've made a friend for life. Be damned, you little thief! Pierre! Don't listen to her. You remind her of a stolen daughter. She must be your age. And she never heard from her again? No, they say that all she has is a tiny shoe that she always carries with her. Did you say a tiny shoe? No, that can't be true. What's wrong with you? You're quite pale. Oh, nothing. Just a silly thought. Look, they're letting Quasimodo go. Quasimodo didn't dare leave the church for the next few days. He stood sadly on the balustrade, looking out for Esmeralda. Finally, after two long days, he saw her entering the square. Jolly and Pierre had become good friends in the meantime. <laughs> Quasimodo was so happy that he rang all the bells.
Come on, Marie, do your best. She's come. Ring so sweet as you can. You too, you too, Shashin. If I'm not mistaken, the bells are ringing in your honor today. You've won the heart of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Today, I'll dance only for him. Not that witch again. I forbade her to dance. She's keeping the people away from mass. Look, look up there. Look. There. Look, look how he's staring at the dancing girl. It's frightening. And she's got that bewitched goat with her too. I'll make sure that she doesn't make our bishop the laughing stock again. Jolly, how late is it? You witch! Can't you stop turning the people's heads? Instead of working and praying, they're watching you. Sacrilege your performances. What do you want from me? Why do you begrudge people a little entertainment? Entertainment? You're seducing them to evil. Don't say I haven't warned you. You and your goat. I order you to leave Paris today. Don't worry, Jelly. That monk's crazy. He can't harm us. The people of Paris like us. Your Honor. What is it? Can't you see that I'm busy? But, Your Honor, Abbey Frollo, the Abbey of Notre Dame, wishes to speak with you. What does he want again? Oh, well, let him in. Your Honor, I'm sure you've heard of the gypsy girl who dances in front of my church every day. She's very beautiful. An enchantment to the city. You see, she's bewitched you too, Your Honor. I'm here to accuse her of witchcraft. Do you really have to? Yes, yes, I know we haven't had a witchcraft trial in ages. But does it have to be the lovely Esmeralda? What do you have against her? Sir Judge, she's a danger to the souls of the people of Paris and especially to our church. I didn't mean to insult you, and I mean well. If you say she's a witch, well, you know more about this than I do. There are enough witnesses who are ready to testify that the gypsy Esmeralda is guilty of witchcraft and black magic. If you don't try her, I'll go to the bishop of Paris. He won't be pleased to hear that you doubted the word of the Abbey of Notre Dame. Your Honor, the bishop can fire you if he wants to. And who will pay for your feasts then? Or me, for that matter, huh? Hmm. You're right, very well. If you insist, I have Esmeralda rested at her next performance. Would that satisfy you? <laughs> it's Esmeralda! Esmeralda! Esmeralda's coming! Esmeralda! Esmeralda! Yeah, Esmeralda! Esmeralda! Listen to the hunchback of Notre Dame's greeting for me. We really have to do our best today to be worthy of such a greeting. There she is. Take her into custody. Excuse me, moi, Capitaine, but I've never seen her dance. Can we first watch a performance after that? There's plenty of time. Why not? We also deserve a little entertainment. Bravo, Esmeralda! Bravo, bravo, Esmeralda! Bravo! This ah, is enough. Come on, it's time to go. Did you enjoy it, Quasimodo? I danced especially for you. Gypsy, by order of the chief judge of Paris, I arrest you and your goat because of uh, witchcraft. Arrest? Why, I was only... 
You better come on your own free will, or I will have to use force. Pierre! Quasimodo! Come, Quasimodo, quick! in the court. We hereby begin the trial of the gypsy girl. She is accused of witchcraft together with the devil in the guise of a goat. <gasps> did you hear that? Not only do they want to turn Esmeralda into a witch, they want to turn my jolly into a devil. <gasps> of course, you didn't understand anything. As witness to the evil deeds of the accused, we call a nun, Sister Johanna, into the witness stand. Sister Johanna, please. Your Honor, it was at Pentecost that this woman bewitched the people of Paris. And not only that, she had the devil in the form of a goat with her and let it do things that no Christian animal can. And as if that wasn't enough, she got the people of Paris to mock our own Lord Bishop of Paris. Yes, that's what she did, that... <gasps> Citizens of Paris to erase all doubts that the accused witch is in the league with the devil, I asked the court orderly to bring in the second accused. <sighs> Look, the goat. The goat! Let us begin the cross-questioning of the goat. What time is it? <laughs> That's right. It's three o'clock. Tell me, how can an animal know this? It can only be witchcraft. But Jelly isn't bewitched. I taught her all her tricks myself. Silence, accused. To continue the questioning, how does the Bishop of Paris Speak! Jally, stop! You're damning yourself! What the people out on the square enjoy as entertainment, in here, they're led to believe that it's witchcraft. There is no shadow of a doubt that the accused is a witch, and in a league with the devil. Admit your guilt. Say it now! No, I'm not a witch and Jally isn't a devil. I know who had me arrested. He's over there. He hates me because I'm beautiful and the people like me. You see, now she's insulting our honorable Abbe of the Notre Dame. Liar! Witch! The gypsy and her goat are hereby condemned to death. In three days, they'll be taken to Place Greve and they'll be hanged. It's just a bad dream. <laughs> Esmeralda and Jolly were taken to a cold, dark cell. <laughs> Tomorrow's the day, Esmeralda, early in the morning. <gasps> Can I get you anything? Do you have a last wish? Poor girl, why did you have to cross Abbe Frolet's path? He's the worst witch hunter we ever had in Paris. But Jolie, why do you want to hang Jolie? I really feel sorry for her. The next morning, Esmeralda and Jolly were bound and taken to Notre Dame. It was a custom that a witch be brought before the priest. Anyone and everybody had come to Notre Dame to watch the execution. How lovely she is. It's actually a pity about her. Not this monk? I ask you for the last time to forsake all evil. You're the evil one. I've done nothing. 
so die. God have mercy on her. Asylum in the church. Clever Quasimodo, she's safe. No worldly power can remove her from the church. <laughs> the judge is going to be mad. Quasimodo, who would have thought that? By all the seven deadly sins. Quasimodo had taken Esmeralda up to his bell tower. Quasimodo, if it hadn't been for you, they'd have taken me to the gallows. Listen, Quasimodo, I... Don't say anything. I can't understand you anyway. But now you must listen to me. Never leave the church. Neither by day or by night. They'll kill you if you do. You are safe in here, just in case I give you this. If you need me, then whistle. It has a tone that I can hear. Now I leave you. Try and get a little sleep. Sleep? How will I ever be able to sleep in peace again? <laughs> Jolly. Jolly, my little Jolly. <laughs> what is it, Jolly? Come on, be good. <laughs> oh, that evil monk. Yes, it's me. Your new friend could save you from the worldly powers. But now he has delivered you into my power. Don't come any nearer, you devil. Assassin. Yeah, <laughs> you won't escape your punishment. Not if I have to take you to the gallows myself. I'll be a follow. Quasimodo! This has nothing to do with you. Go away. I don't know what's going on here, but Esmeralda will shoot for help, and I will protect her. So, she's cast a spell on you, too. Damn you both! Oh, Quasimodo, what now? We'll never be safe from this monk. Tosweep, I promise you, as long as I live, nothing will happen to you. How dare he defy me and oppose the order of the church? Brother Augustinus. Brother Augustinus! Amy Paolo. It cannot be that a witch is granted asylum in the holy church of Notre Dame. It's a sacrilege in this holy place. And don't forget the goat! The devil incarnate right here in Notre Dame! Who would have thought that was possible? Quasimodo has been bewitched by Esmeralda. He even threatened me, his lord and master. Yes! That's unbelievable. Why am I stopping us from taking Esmeralda to the gallows ourselves and handing her over to the law? Quasimodo is stopping us. He watches over Esmeralda more than he did his bells. Brother Augustinus, go to Esmeralda's friends in the Court of Miracles and get them to divert Quasimodo so we can sneak her out of the back door of Notre Dame. In the Court of Miracles, the beggars and gypsies were celebrating Esmeralda's rescue by the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Hey, folks, looks like we're getting a visit from above. A monk, a representative of the church, must be a very courageous one of his kind to dare come here. Who is your leader? I have something important to tell him. It has to do with Esmeralda. I, I am the king of these good and noble people. What is wrong with Esmeralda? She's in danger. I have it over here, a conversation between the Abbey and the judge. She's to be removed from the church by soldiers tomorrow morning and hanged. But asylum in the church is sacred. 
Not for Abbe Frollo. He says that when a witch is involved, there are no rights for asylum. And if Esmeralda really is your friend, then you have to save her. Come, comrades, let's storm Notre Dame and rescue Esmeralda. Bravo! Sierra is right. Courage, my friends. I'll be easy. There's no resistance in the church. Off we go to Notre Dame. <laughs> the beggars and gypsies decided to wait until it was dark and then go to Notre Dame. Quasimodo couldn't sleep that night. He restlessly watched over the sleeping city of Paris. In the darkness, he saw the square of Notre Dame filling with people. He thought they were soldiers who were going to take Esmeralda out of the church and hang her. They won't take Esmeralda, not. Cowards, brothers and sisters, let's get to work! Holy Virgin, the Greeks of witchcraft. Idiot! We underestimated the monks. They are defending themselves. We'll show them. <gasps> That's Quasimodo. He thinks we're soldiers. Quasimodo, it's, it's me, Pierre. He can't hear you. You can shout as loud as you like. It's just one of them, and you don't think we're gonna let him stop us. You're right. We won't let him stop us. By all that's holy, something isn't right here. I've had enough. We'll be of no help to Esmeralda if we're dead. To you, to who, to what I get, Esmeralda. Esmeralda. The noise had woken Esmeralda and Charlie. Do you hear that, Jelly? Do you hear the noise? I think it's all because of me. They're coming to get me. Do you hear? They're coming already. <laughs> you don't really think that you're going to escape justice, do you? You can forget your whistle. Quasimodo is busy. A good protector you have. It's your friends from the Court of Miracles he's fighting against. <laughs> After the people from the Court of Miracles fled, Pierre also made his way home. Charlie, what are you doing here? Where's Esmeralda? <laughs> Esmeralda's in danger? Are you trying to tell me that? She's somewhere out there with the Abbe? <laughs> Quick, Charlie, what are we waiting for? Let's find your friend. Abbe Frollo had forced Esmeralda to the gallows on the Place Greve. This time you won't escape the gallows. There's no Quasimodo to be seen anywhere, nor anybody else. Have a mercy with me. Mercy with a witch. <laughs> I am not a witch. Admit your guilt, because not only your life, but your soul is in danger. Is the gypsy finally getting what she deserves? Here. You can finally have your revenge. Hold her till the soldiers come. Yes. It serves you right to end up on the gallows. I know that the gypsies did you a great wrong, but it couldn't have been me. I was just a child. Have mercy. Give me my child again and I'll set you free. Oh, I really understand you. You're looking for your child, and I'm looking for my parents. Look at this. This is all I have left of my child. Look. Look at this, too. My intuition wasn't wrong. You? You're my daughter? <laughs> I 
I can see Jolly. Esmeralda's in the old woman's grip. But the two of us can free her. The old woman can't be that strong. My daughter! And when I think of how I hated you... The old witch! Let Esmeralda go immediately! Pierre! Don't hurt her! It's not the way it seems! Oh? Is there something I should know that I do not? She's my mother! Look at her! So, we've solved the riddle. But there's something else worrying me. Listen carefully. Your friend is right. Flee as long as you can. But what about you? My life is almost done. Leave me here in my cellar. It becomes my home. Come on, Esmeralda. If you want to end your life on the gallows, it's your business. But that's something else. Jolly and I can think of something better. Go, Esmeralda. Go to your friend, the gypsies, and move on with them. Go away from Paris. Far. Sadly, Esmeralda followed Pierre and Jolly, just in the nick of time. Now you got here too late! After the gypsy now has fled. Escaped? You allowed her to escape? That's what happens when you leave a weak old lady to watch a witch like her. She bit me in the hand, the little devil, so I had to let her go. Oh, could you? Now you will hang from the gallows instead of her. Soldiers, do your duty. Now you're going too far, Abbe Frollo. Everybody knows that the old woman hated the gypsies bitterly, especially Esmeralda. She would never have let her go of her own free will. <sighs> By the three golden hairs of the living. <sighs> he... <laughs> He's gone crazy. As soon as Quasimodo had chased off the beggars, he ran as quickly as he could to his bell tower. But when he entered the room, he found it empty. Esmeralda! Esmeralda! Quasimodo searched the church from top to bottom, but Esmeralda had disappeared. Esmeralda! Desperate, he returned to his bells. Then he saw Abbe Frollo coming along the balustrade. Uh, has the whole world turned against me? How could she get away from me for the second time? Esmeralda, where is she? She's escaped. But I could explain it to you at least five times. You wouldn't even understand it the sixth time. <laughs> Esmeralda, what have you done? <laughs> You killed her! <laughs> Quasimodo then went back to his bell tower to wait for the soldiers to come and arrest him. He thought Esmeralda was dead, so he didn't care what happened to him now. Quasimodo was taken to the same cell that Esmeralda had been in before. He barely moved and groaned now and again despondently. Esmeralda! Here, you hunchbacked ape! Somebody had a descent for you! <laughs> Esmeralda! She's alive! She's thinking of me! Now, Quasimodo didn't care what happened to him. Esmeralda, the only person who had ever mattered to him, was safe. After she had sent Quasimodo the whistle, Esmeralda decided to move on with Pierre and Jolly and leave Paris behind them, because there was nothing to keep them there anymore. A Paris where the bells of Notre Dame still pealed out, but never again so beautifully as when Quasimodo was the toller of the bells in Notre Dame.